Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena and today we're gonna be playing with some deck requests by the fan, this time called The. Shout out to you by the way. Uh, we're gonna be playing his deck that he submitted on Discord server and I'm gonna be uh, trying my best to explain uh, how it works, how it's uh, possibly best played and yeah that's gonna be pretty much the theme of today's video. We're gonna be starting our uh, games against the bronze pawns with 12 medals, who pretty much starts very aggressively going with the bomb girl at the bridge. It doesn't really matter for us, but at the same time it's a good thing to see that we're not we're not gonna be playing against like some absolute abomination. Also, it's very good to have a piercing arch against bomb girl because if you can uh, if you can. Uh, react fast enough, you can just get a two uh, free hits with a, uh, with a piercing archer and if you cannot, uh, you can still take a hit uh, to the tower and get more damage by just lining it up and lining it up is not like super difficult so uh, it might as well just work uh, in your favor. Also I'm gonna go for this cyclone, pretty much a mistake, I should be pulling uh, things away from my phone king instead of in, so my opponent will get away with pretty nice defense, however right now uh, my opponent won't be having any uh, any building to counter the bone blasters and I would say very lucky defense out of him getting uh, the uh, getting the bomb girl splashing on my bone blasters pretty much instantly as they appeared on the board. Uh, I would say that was lucky for him that he kinda defended that pretty well, but at the same time I predicted the bomb girl at the bridge, so I might as well just not complain. I'm gonna cycle a funking in the back because frankly I don't have any better play. I'm gonna play a ghost as well, and then I think I'm gonna just fight at the bridge with a piercing archer which will absolutely obliterate all the phones that are just there. I'm gonna play Bomb Blasters on the opposite side, just to apply pressure, and since he wasted cannon, that's definitely a good move. I'm gonna play right now runners with a uh, Madness, and my opponent will be too slow to react to them. They're gonna head straight to the tower, and yeah, his tower will survive, but not for long. Also, I'm getting read uh, against his mm, against his Bomb Girl, which is absolutely phenomenal. Right now, I'm gonna actually try to 100% counter his phone king and I do. I'm gonna play Bone Blaster just to force out the can on the opposite side. He's gonna play Skeletons, but it doesn't really matter. We have a huge mana advantage right now, so we're gonna just go in pretty much, try to over overwhelm my opponent, and there we go. We're gonna get a, a first good game uh, Yeah, with this bizarre deck. Like I've said, I'm gonna spend some uh, first games to figure out how it works, and then I'm gonna just write the conclusions at the end of the video, whether I think this deck is good or bad. And here we are in the second game of today's video, we're gonna be playing against, well, user that was uh, created not too long ago since uh, 390,000 is pretty recent number if I may to say. Obviously, if you don't, uh, if you like make the uh, Boom Arena account and don't uh, insert any uh, nickname, the uh, name given will be uh, with the similar pattern as false, it's gonna be user and then uh, the series number which is uh, the same as your player ID uh, and that's gonna be the case uh, in the, I mean that's gonna be the case uh, right here so my opponent will be playing some Dark Knight stuff which is absolutely fine for us since we have a plenty uh, of counters we have uh, a Fong King which is one of the best counters against a Dark Knight in the game we have runners which is uh, semi okay like not too good but not too bad either we have also a counter against digger which will be absolutely fabulous we can just activate a viking tower and pretty much set our, ourselves to a very good game my opponent will be trying to three star me with uh, phone cakes which is absolutely not happening i'm gonna just play phone king on one side then i'm gonna play runners on the opposite side basically trying to uh, force him to choose into defending one of the following sides and he's gonna have uh, no mana unfortunately to defend the runners it's gonna be absolute bloodbath on the left side which I'm gonna promptly take very cool to see 
We're gonna play Bone Blaster just to ta tank for the ghost as well, just to take the right side tower. And right now we are in just a prime position to take a three star. If my pawn, I think I'm gonna take a three star even if my pawn won't resign because yeah, he's just wasting mana at this point to play some diggers on my Viking tower. Then a phone kick. I pretty much can just ignore it all and just go for a 3 star because my opponent doesn't have mana to defend the, uh, his own Viking tower. So yeah, that's gonna be a very bizarre game. I don't think he expected to get away with just playing uh, things on my Viking tower, but uh, works for me because it's just a free win. Let's jump to the game number three. And we're in the game number three against a 6 star with 140 mels. Uh, I would say my first uh, thoughts about this deck is like, it doesn't really have a win condition. Uh, you kinda have to uh, make uh, make one on the fly, uh, kinda adjusting to your opponent's play, because I don't really see runners as a win condition, it's more of a like... Uh, it's obviously an offensive troop because it has a high speed, but at the same time it's like not uh, super good on offense because it can be easily distracted and um, yeah I mean it's the case for many win conditions that uh, they can be easily countered but like runners are too easily countered so they are not just a reliable source of damage here I'm gonna actually get a very convenient uh, connection but it's like pretty much the first play mistake of my opponent he just didn't have the right responses to my uh, cards. He didn't know I had runners uh, in the first place, so he wasted 4 mana playing Super Ape, and then he didn't know I have a Cyclone to pretty much obliterate everything that he owns. Uh, here I'm gonna play Fon King, just take one hit from the Super Ape, and then I'm gonna instantly counterplay with runners on the opposite side just to make him choose once again. Like I said, this deck doesn't have like uh, one very clear win condition, you pretty much want to just adjust to uh, what your opponent is doing, because obviously you have Piercing Archer and Cyclone if you want to sometimes uh, get fancy and get some damage if your opponent doesn't uh, allow you to break through at all whatsoever. Uh, I'm gonna actually play Piercing Archer right now, and if he plays Gunner, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually Cyclone anyway. It, it may be an overcommitment, but at the same time I take in the tower, so I'm absolutely fine with losing one on my own. If my opponent obviously is capable of taking one, so uh, if he's not, I'm gonna just get away with it. And it looks like my opponent is just straight up giving up. He has had enough of this game, and I'm absolutely agreeing with him, because for a Super Ape player, it's already a very unplayable position and he probably just wants to reset to the next one. And I'm gonna do the same as well. Uh, I would say, so far we were just cruising. I expected uh, some players to put up a bigger fight, but like, uh, we're about to see if we get someone better in the game number 4 and 5. To continue my thought from the previous uh, game, I'm gonna just say Bone Blasters don't kind of seem like a real win condition, it's fine to just cycle, sometimes get some uh, pressure going, but like, uh, it's very difficult to play, to rely solely on Bone Blasters to guarantee 100% of your deck's damage, because uh, usually your opponent uh, will counter Bone Blasters in some way, shape or form, and thus you have to be ready for something else. Also, my opponent will be absolutely countering my ghost right here. He's gonna spawn an ape, I don't really mind, and it looks like Almeida with 72 mils will actually put up some fight, uh, except I don't know about this naked symmetry, because I'm gonna just play runners for one mana, and what I mean is that uh, my opponent pretty much uh, played a... Uh, I'm, it's not gonna be lined up, that's, <laughs> that's actually my bad. It should have been lined up. Mistakes do happen sometimes. What can I say? Um, either way, I've played runners for one mana pretty much. The map behind this is... Cemetery costs five mana and it's gonna pretty much deal no damage once I play runners on them. And then uh, runners will just counter attack and uh, that's why I'm saying that I've played uh, runners for one mana because uh, if we can trade, uh, he played 5 and I've played 6, so I've spent 1 mana more than him, 
but uh, his mana is absolutely dead and mine is still alive and that's why uh, okay he's gonna actually counter my run that was that was nice play didn't expect that plus i didn't want to waste cyclone because i would be 100 percent all in in that case so i'm gonna just let him get away uh, that's why i've played runners for one mana back then and he actually here gets a very nice trade so i'm not gonna be like 100 percent winning right here but at the same time i'm still in a winning position uh, which i should be able to like easily convert if i don't make some silly blunders like, my opponent is right now playing Cemetery on uh, my Piercing Archer, which is uh, definitely not a best play. I'm gonna just summarize it that way. Also, his T-Rex uh, will be very annoying since I don't uh, really have any good response against it, except for a Piercing Archer, which I have to cycle to uh, right now. Okay, Funking will be barely able to stop the Twins Charge, so... Very cool to see. I'm gonna actually right now ignore the cemetery because it's not gonna do anything anymore. I'm gonna miss the fact that my opponent has a skeleton horde once more. Yeah, I think it's just a blind spot. I usually play the decks which have some uh, of uh, like less heavy and more dynamic small spells. So like cycle, I usually reserve for a defensive purposes, like pull the win condition or like for offense, pull things uh, for a piercing archer. I usually don't use cycle to counter skeleton horde, so I'm gonna just miss these opportunities against skeleton horde, which I obviously know is a correct call right here and you shouldn't definitely kill the skill horde but i'm just always too late and when you are too late against skill horde it's usually like a good idea to just let your push die and pretty much reset because uh, if you spend a cycle like if like i've said you're absolutely all in and if your troops are dead and you're all in you're gonna get counter pushed very easily and you might lose the game on the spot so it's uh, from the practical standpoint if you don't re if you don't like predict with Cyclone, it's usually like better just to uh, wait it out and kind of clutch the upcoming defense. So yeah, that's going to be the game number four. Let's uh, jump to the game number five and actually expect some opponent that will put up a uh, greater fight. And here we're going in the game number five against Chiva J845. Obviously, one of the... Uh, the most active players uh, in the game uh, for the time being he's gonna actually wait for me to make the first move i'm gonna just cycle madness it's never bad to do so uh, he's gonna still wait for me to make a move so i'm gonna just play bone blasters and this time yes i mean he should be uh, like reacting to me i'm right now one mana up so i'm gonna just cycle the ghost in the back and he's gonna be doing the exact same thing so i'm gonna just cycle devils pretty much provoking him into playing something more committal he's gonna play a, a necromancer which is gonna be okay i'm gonna play cycling just to get rid of his uh, necromancer because it would be very annoying for me to deal with it uh, later on his ghost obviously will get a one hit and it will be a bit annoying, but like, it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna play runners here, just to counter his twins, and then a piercing archer. Obviously, piercing archer will put a ton of work against my runners, so I don't think they'll just uh, be able to do anything uh, on the uh, offensive department, but at the same time, it's not too bad. He's gonna play cycling against my piercing archer, which was the play I kinda anticipated. I'm gonna play bomb blaster to hide the viking. Uh, I'm gonna counter his viking with the devils, I'm gonna just counter push because right now I think I have the advantage and if he plays necromancer I'm gonna just cy cyclone it in and I actually missed the cyclone, oh my god, that's that's actually a bad play because I kinda need to get rid of this cyclone because, I mean this necromancer because if I don't, yeah, these apes will just keep stacking and that's gonna be just a very bad news. He's gonna play poison which is absolutely perfect for me because even though it gets rid of the piercing archer, I pretty much got away with it. I should be able to hit this necromancer next time, but like, like you've seen, I've just missed and it was a, a terrible blunder by me, honestly. I'm not gonna try to sugarcoat it by any means, shape or form. I'm gonna play devils, I think that's gonna be the best play, even, yeah. He's gonna be able to play piercing archer, but like, it's absolutely fine by me. I'm gonna play piercing archer on my own, I'm gonna play bone blasters because i'm pretty damn sure that he's gonna be okay that, that's that's gonna be a tough defense to clutch so i'm gonna just play runners to 
deal with this. Viking, I'm gonna play Cyclone, basically some hard defending right here. Uh, usually against Viking I would just counterplay on the opposite side, but counterplaying against a uh, Viking is very difficult. Some, so I chose the uh, different approach. Okay, he's gonna actually breach this tower because I don't see myself defending it. There we go. And right now we're gonna be having a huge counter push. Uh, I'm gonna basically try to uh, get him right here. He's gonna get away with it pretty much, yeah. I expected to get a way lot more damage from this attack, so like I've said, uh, he's gonna get away with it. He's gonna play a phone kick against his ghost, he's gonna play a uh, Viking on his own, which is absolutely reasonable. I'm gonna play a piercing archer, basically try to get some chip. I'm gonna play some cyclone, just to line everything up, get some value, kill his piercing archer, and right now he's in a world of trouble because my piercing archer is still on his tower and is uh, dealing absolutely a ton of damage. He's gonna play a uh, lightning on my tower, which I think is a just uh, incorrect call, and I'm gonna get a GG uh, in the game number 5. That was a tough one, as I realistically didn't have like too good of a counter against Viking, I had to like play for some tricks. That's why when I uh, was met with uh, this push on the left side, I was kind of struggling to defend because if I'm not able to counterplay the Viking player, he's gonna just play some uh, big pushes, which I realistically cannot stop uh, like trading positively uh, with mana. So yeah, that was a tough one, but we've managed to persevere. And with that being said, we're gonna end this video today. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching till the end if you reached it so far. And if you enjoyed my content, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm posting a Boom Arena content every single day. And there are definitely some decks that you definitely will like. There are definitely some plays that you will uh, learn from and probably apply into your game plan. At least that's what I hope and uh, I think you just would uh, love my content if you uh, watch uh, some of my videos. So yeah, if you're a newer uh, viewer, definitely, uh, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel because <laughs> I think it's worth it. Just give it a shot. If you're not, you can unsubscribe. And if you are a uh, long time uh, member of my channel, thanks for staying till the end. I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of Boom Arena.